Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to stretch your watercolor paper. And you may say, well, why do I want to do that, Lindsay? That sounds like work. Well, here's the deal. Um, painting on a stretched piece of watercolor paper is wonderful. Listen to this. Can you hear that? This paper is tight as a drum, super flat, and on a hardboard panel. It's going to be a joy to paint on because it's not going to buckle at all. All. The other really great um, benefit of this is that you can use less expensive paper and get, you know, better results. So this is uh, some Fabriano Studio Paper. It's 25% cotton. It's a great uh, student grade paper. It's a great, um, you know, practice paper. Uh, the only thing is it's 90 pounds. So if I just paint on this, if I was to wet this paper, it's going to buckle. Um, it's just too lightweight to do that. So if I stretch it, I get the paper as wet as it ever needs to be, is wet, wetter than it's ever going to get when I paint it, and it pulls it out flat at that saturation, so that when I do my washes, when I paint on that, it's never going to buckle, because I'm never going to have it wetter than I do at the point when I'm stretching it. So this is the 9 by 12 size, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate with. This is the um, 11 by 14, which I've also, I've got one here that I did that size, and I think if you're going to go bigger than 11 by 14, you need a wider tape. Now this is gummed paper tape and this is the one inch size and this is great for um nine by twelve and you can get this i think i paid a dollar twenty five a roll at my local butcher shop for this and um yeah when the vegetarian goes to the butcher shop it's to buy gum paper tape um so they were nice enough to sell me a few rolls of that it does last quite a long time so what we're going to do is um we're going to work on a piece of hardboard and you can go to the um home improvement store and buy this in i think the smallest sheet you can probably get is two foot by four foot or you can get some for free and what i did was i went to a hardware store and um i asked if they had any discontinued paneling samples and they did so they will typically give just give these away and they're actually a really good painting surface if you want to just so it and paint it on it with acrylics or oil so that's something to keep in mind if you um trying to save a little money in your painting. Um, so I'm just using it just plain the way it is and I'm going to take a sponge here, just sponge with water, and I am just going to wet, wet it. Now this is brand new, I've never um, stretched paper on this before, so my water kind of wants to bead up on it. It will get more absorbent as you go and actually become easier to use, but it'll be fine today. And I'm just going to squeeze that out, I'm going to suck up any extra water, I just kind of want to get the surface wet. Now, here is where you can do things differently. Um, I am going to work with a spray bottle, but you can also soak your paper in a clean tub or vat or bucket. Uh, the reason I'm using a spray bottle is because I don't have any clean tubs or buckets right now. And also, um, because this is a less expensive paper, I really want to make sure I don't remove any of the sizing. So um, generally paper is sized internally, like when they in the pulp, and then it's sized on the surface again to keep it, you know, it, it keeps your paint from feathering. So I want to make sure I don't really take out that ability. I don't know how well sized this paper is, so just to be on the safe side. Now I'm going to center that on my board and I'm going to spray the other side. Okay, you want to get it really wet because the object is to get this paper wetter than it's ever going to get when you paint it. So of course <laughs> this is a little time consuming doing it this way where you could just soak it. Um, if you soak it you want to soak it in really cold water and for less than 10 minutes. And some people you know will soak it longer but you know and some people will stretch 140 and 300 pound paper but i find that to be a little unnecessary unless you're working really big all right so now i've just used this um this sponge i'm wringing it out and i'm absorbing extra water but also i'm getting air bubbles out which I thought was pretty important, but you know what? I accidentally had some air bubbles in some of the paper that I just stretched, and I thought, well, rather than redo it, I'm just going to leave it, and I'm going to see um, see if it makes a difference. And you know what? It didn't make a difference. They all they all were tight as a drum when I was done. All right, so now I'm going to tear off some tape. You can cut it ahead of times if you want to, but um, I'm not going to bother with that. And I'm just going to spray this with my water. That's real scientific. You could wet it with a sponge too. You don't get too much water. If you get too much water on there, you're going to um, you're going to wash the gum away, and you don't want that. You want that adhesive to be on there. Then just press it down really well, and do that for every side. Just make sure you do get plenty. Well, if you would get the right amount. You'll feel for it. Honestly, it's one of those things where you know you might the first time you do it, you might have a you might have, you know, some that pop up, but generally you'll get the hang of it. I haven't stretched paper in years, actually, so I did a couple. <laughs> I, did, I did some major work before I did it again because it has been a while. But it's just such a great way to be able to use less expensive materials and um, 
and get great results. And my, my, actually, I did just notice my desk, because I was wondering, I was getting these blue fingerprints all over the place. I'm like, where is that coming from? And I think I've reactivated some ink on my, <laughs> on my board. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's like, it must be some spray ink from the other day. There's a uh, puddles. I guess the idea I'm due for a little cleaning down here. <laughs> not just, not just a pickup, but an actual clean. And we'll spray this one. My desk is going to be nice and clean when I'm done this though. And there we go. And then I like to lay it flat outside in the sun, if possible, to dry. I really don't think this, you know, I don't want to leave it in my damp basement to dry, but see how it's nice and flat. And it's going to, as it dries, the paper is going to contract. And um, then it's just going to have a super, super tight surface. You can paint on it and you're not going to get any sort of buckling. And again, I'll show you the finished one. Look at that. Isn't that nice? the sound of stretched paper. There you have it. Um, again, just to review, you'll need a spray bottle or something to soak your paper in. You'll need um, a sponge and, uh, you, and you can use a kitchen sponge, a clean kitchen sponge. You know, I would get go buy one at the dollar store and just keep it for stretching paper so you don't get any nasties in there. And uh, just some gummed paper tape. If you're going to do paper that's bigger than nine by 12, I strongly recommend you get a wider one, such as an um, inch and a half, two inch or three inch uh, gum paper tape. And you could find that at like a um, packing supply store or online, probably Paper Mart, um, someplace like that. We'll have it for you. So there you have it, how to stretch paper. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will answer you. And until next time, happy crafting.